Since this video is all about tube bending, we thought it would be fun to create a little challenge to go along with it. We asked three different people, all with different levels of experience with tube bending, to connect two fittings to this high pressure control valve package. It was usually just eyeballed. Go with it. A little bit of a twist. <laughs> oh, okay, it's rounded over here, so maybe this is where you bend it. We'll show you the results to our challenge in an upcoming video, so be on the lookout. Whether you're an experienced technician or a beginner, this video will provide you with useful information about fittings and the basics of using a hand tube bender for pneumatic devices in the oil and gas industry. I'm going to show you how to bend tubing and some important best practices to follow using a high pressure control valve package as an example of some of the bends you'll need to know how to make. We'll start by looking at a fitting which includes four parts, the body, nut, front ferrule, and back ferrule. Generally, you don't want to take these apart ahead of time to avoid possibly getting any dirt or debris inside. If it accidentally comes apart, it's good to know how the parts go back together. For all fittings on control valves and equipment, we suggest using a thread sealant such as Loctite rather than Teflon tape to avoid potentially getting any tape inside the equipment. In general, you want to plan out a path ahead of time so you can avoid tubing that crosses paths if possible. Taking some time up front to figure out your paths can save you on material and make your bends easier. On our packages, we like to keep all the tubing as close to the valve body as possible to keep it out of the way. If you're installing a straight connector, you can fully tighten it when you install it since there's only one way the tube can go in. However, to give yourself a little bit more flexibility, don't fully tighten any 90 degree elbow fittings until the tubing has been installed. For this package, we're going to start by connecting the upstream side of the valve to the sense line. Apply sealant to the connection. Since it's a 90 degree elbow fitting, we won't tighten it all the way yet. One of the first things you can do on your tubing is make an end reference mark. This mark will make sure you always know which side of the tube is the reference side, which will go to the left side of your bender. The first measurement will be taken from where the tubing touches the bottom of the nut to the center of where the bend will be. I'm going to use a piece of scrap tubing to get an estimate of where this bend needs to be. Then measure and mark where it will make the 90 degree bend. The centerline radius is determined by the die size of the tubing benders. It can be helpful to mark the whole circumference of the tube so that no matter how it's inserted into the bender, you can still see the line. You can easily put this tool in a vise, as we're going to do, to help keep it steady and leave your hands free to control the tubing. Lift the short arm of the bender, align both zero markers on the tool, and insert the tube into the jaw of the bender. Then adjust the tube until your mark is aligned with the L position. For 90 degree bends, you'll always align your mark with the L. Our reference side is on the left, so that's why we use the L. If your reference side is on the right, you would use the R. Tighten the tube latch and make your bend. The zero on the arm will be your indicator for the degree of bend you're making. Pull the arm down until you reach the 90 degree mark. You may need to bend slightly more than your target angle to compensate for angular spring back which is how the tube will spring back a few degrees when released. Don't overbend it too far. You can always go back and add more. Now we'll be cutting our bent tube to length. Insert the tubing in one fitting and make a mark where it aligns with the shoulder of the fitting body. A tubing cutter works by rotating around the tubing and gradually tightening the cutting wheel until it cuts through the tubing. Position the mark in the cutter. Turn the handle until the wheel touches the tubing. Then turn the handle an extra 1 16th turn. The marks on the handle indicate a 1 8th turn, so use that as a reference. Rotate the cutter around the tube. After every second rotation, turn the handle about a 1 16th of a turn until the tube is cut through. After cutting the tubing, use a deburring tool to remove any sharp edges or burrs from the tubing. 
This is an important step to ensure that the tubing fits securely into the fittings without causing any damage. To keep track of the amount of rotation, you can mark the tubing and nut in its starting position. Hand tighten the nut, then turn another one or one and a quarter turns with a wrench. Over tightening can put too much pressure on the fitting. Do this for both fittings. For our second connection, we'll be using a straight connector and one elbow. First, apply sealant to the connection. Fully tighten the straight connection, then start the elbow connector, leaving a half turn to make the installation easier. For this piece of tubing, we'll need two 90 degree bins. Measure to get a rough estimate of the length of tubing you'll need. Cutting a long piece of straight tubing is difficult to hold on to while cutting so you can lightly put it in a vise if you need. We'll do a final length cut later. A quick trick you can use to get a measurement for a bend like this is to use your tubing set in the connector and some scrap tubing in the other connector. Line them up by eye and use a straight edge or a level to get a more accurate measurement. Make your mark on the center line. Using the same techniques as the other bend, insert the tubing, align the zeros, and put the mark at the L. Clamp down with the latch and bend to the 90 degree mark. For our second 90 degree bend, accuracy is more important now because we must reach our fitting perfectly. Return the bent tube to the fitting and slightly move the scrap piece of tubing so it can rest in its final position. Mark the center line on your tubing for your second 90 degree bend. Before clamping the latch down all the way, make sure that your tubing bender is square with the bend you previously made. Check the level of the tool, then check the level of the previous bend. Secure the latch. Bend the arm down to bring the zero to the 90 degree indicator, maybe a little bit more, then release. With the tubing back in the fitting, mark the final length based on the start of the shoulder of the fitting body. Make your cut, again tighten after every second rotation. Deburr the end and you're ready to install. Hand tighten the fittings. Mark a reference point and turn one to one and a quarter turns. On this example, we'll be making a 90 and an offset bend. First, we'll measure for the first 90 degree bend. Use a piece of scrap tubing in one fitting and your actual tubing in the other. Use a level to mark where your center line will be. The length of tube before our mark is less than the allowable amount of this tubing bender. Since we know we'll need the shortest amount of tubing as possible before the bend, I'll simply adjust it so the reference end of the tubing is aligned with the latch. A best practice when you're making two bins in a single piece of tube is to make a reference mark on top of the tubing so that you can get the correct orientation of the bins. Set a scrap piece of tubing and measure the distance from the center line of the scrap piece to the center line of the fitting. In this case, it's three inches. For this piece, the offset just needs to clear the bonnet or any obstructions. Make your mark and bend the tube. But for this bend, we're not bending for a certain angle we're bending to achieve that three inch offset height. 
For this bend, use the mark you made earlier to help you align the tubing correctly for your next bend. You'll need more precision on this second bend, so use a level to get your angle correct. Tighten the latch and make your bend. This might be a little bit more of a trial and error process, just don't bend it too much. Bend it close, get a measurement, and adjust from there. The reason we're doing it this way instead of mathematically is because it's just not necessary for the type of connections that we need to make here. If you want to calculate the exact distance for an offset with two 45 degree bends, multiply the offset height by 1.414. That will be the length of tubing needed between the two center lines of both 45 degree bends. With our offset bend ready, Mark the final length of the tubing near the shoulder of the fitting. Make your cut and deburr the end. Once the piece is in place, make reference marks on the fitting and tubing to fully tighten the connectors. For this connection, we're going to use two straight fittings. The tube will have two 90s. We'll start by fully tightening the fittings using sealant. Take a rough measurement of the amount of tubing you'll need. Each side will need to come out of the fitting and make a 90 degree bend. Set the piece of tubing in the fitting and a scrap piece in the other. Use another piece of tubing to mark the location of the first bend. Fortunately for this one, we can simply eyeball the placement. Make your bend as we have before. Insert the tubing with the latch partway down, line up your zeros, align your mark with the L, tighten the latch, and make your bend. With the piece back in the fitting on the valve body, make your second mark on the tube according to how it lines up with your scrap piece. This bend will need to be level with your previous one. Check the level of the tool, then the level of the previous bend before making your second 90. Mark the tubing where it meets the shoulder of the fitting to make your final cut. After deburring, insert the tube, hand tighten the nut, and then turn another one to one and a quarter turns with a wrench. By following the best practices, tips, and tricks outlined in this video, you can ensure that your tube bending and fitting installation is accurate, consistent, and safe.